We're back. We're back. What? Check it out. What's got going? Taint flips. Taint flips? Who knew ducks surf? Whoa. This guy has hivel swips. Hivel swips? <laughs> hivel swips? New surf technology is taking over. Italo's new freaking workout program is getting me psyched. New plus size world champion is Belly Slater. Belly Slater. Dude, is that Belly Slater? That's Belly Slater. They go for the quad lotus and everything goes wrong. Ah! What? This is how Laird sleeps? This is how Laird sleeps. Whoa. Kim Kardashian surfs now? <laughs> Worst wipeout I've ever seen. Man gets barreled over man? Lego surfboards are taking off and they're more conventional. NSYNC's back. NSYNC's back and they're foiling harder than ever. <laughs> How are these people doing this? What is this, rattle skating? This is rattle skating. <laughs> Underwater surfing is now in session. Alana Blanchard rediscovers herself. <laughs> Welcome back. That was a good intro, dude. Are we the number one podcast in surfing right now? I don't see how we're not. Besides, maybe behind Nathan, Florence, and Koa. But theirs is top quality. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Their podcast is so cool. They're at a kitchen. They're in like this dim lit. <laughs> it's like... Whoosh. You can hear like generators kicking on, <laughs> like fridges. <laughs> Just move them over a little bit. Okay, we have to do a clap. They're like such legends and they, can't they hire like I know a producer? Surfers, we're all the same. We just want to surf. I know. That's why you need guys like me to come on. Come yeah, on. <laughs> we got a film. Dude, I was surfing the other day. Mm -hmm. And these... Asian guys pulling the shark on Pensacola Beach mm -hmm. and they're throwing it around like <laughs> by its hot tail. potato. Like, it was probably like a five foot shark, yeah. And they're like hitting it, throwing it around. Like, like I think in Asian cultures, they eat sharks, right? So it's like shark fin soup or whatever, yeah. And they're like beating it and slinging it around. And I like run in to save the shark's <laughs> life. They're like, this is dinner, dude. I'm like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> I got super aggressive. I'm like, what? Because I was so much taller. And they're right. like, whoa, I had a huge beard. <laughs> I'm like, what? And they're, they couldn't speak English. And they're, they're looking at each other. Like, oh, oh. So you full up ran up on them. Yeah. They're, they're like, oh, <laughs> they got caught. Well, doesn't a shark like pee through its skin? So maybe they're trying to kill it. Pee through its skin. It pees through its skin. Really? Sharks do that. Look it up, guys. Really? Yeah. The more you mess with them, the more the smell comes. Have you That's noticed that? They're peeing yeah. through their skin. Yeah, they don't have bladders. They pee through their skin. I'm cereal. They pee through their. They pee. Not Asians. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about Asians. <laughs> Sharks pee through their skin. <laughs> you said they were hitting them with belts the other day. Yeah, they had their belts out. They're like, <laughs> yeah, like whipping it. <laughs> and you came up and then they, what they do? I walked up, I'm like, ah, ah, <laughs> and uh, freaking scared him. They they didn't say anything, but they felt super bashful, <laughs> and he like slowly pushed it back in, <laughs> and they like walked off and didn't look at me. But I wanted to grab him by his legs and do the same thing he was yeah. doing to the shark. Take like, your, yeah, your leash off your surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what it is. I think people think everyone hates sharks. So it's like everyone's going to be like, yeah, I'm hitting the shark. They're going to think I'm a good guy. Yeah, but jaw, Jaws. Yes, but I think sharks, you know, they're good people too. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking on the beach with my third eye glasses. Yeah. And this homeless dude, like, I don't know what was going on with his life, but dude, he was so scared of me. It freaked him out. <laughs> <laughs> I, wa I was like sitting there and he's like, whoa. Whoa, bro. <laughs> you okay? I'm like, what? <laughs> and do, don't you forget you're wearing them because it's, <laughs> cause it's up here. He's like, what are you, what's going on? I'm like, just chilling, man. He's like, he's like, look at him. He's like, you, you sure you're all right? <laughs> and you're like, like what? Dude, I'm just watching the waves. What's going on? <laughs> and I was like, oh, he sees my third eye. Dude. And I was like, I got to keep my third eye shaded. You know what I mean? And he's like, and he's like oh, he, he just walked off. He was like, Whoa. <laughs> I feel like we've talked about this, but all homeless people have a spiritual level to them. Like they're always sensitive to spiritualness. That's true. Probably because they're not on screens all day. 
Have you ever noticed all homeless people are in like super good shape? Yeah, that's true. No, it's because they're, you know what it is? They're tanner. If you're tan, <laughs> <laughs> if you're tan, you look better. What someone once told me, tan fat is better than pale fat. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it weird that the homeless people look better than the rich, comfortable yeah. people? Yep. Yeah. That's how like backwards our society is. They look like their their hair's a little blonder. They're just moving. They're moving because they have to move. <laughs> move along. You know, there's a whole community of one wheelers out there. What's one wheel? That thing that you, it's a wheel in the middle and people stand on it and it you goes forward. stand on it and they're like. Yeah. And it's like a whole community like surfing. They have like contests and tracks and. One wheeling looks fun though. I got super hurt on a one wheel, so I'll never get on one again. Really? Yes. My friend got me on a one wheel. I was like, just go around. It's easy. So I came around the corner and I was like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. And it broke and took off. Broke? Like it stopped working, but it kept going. Like it's ramped up speed. I'm like, it's not stopping. Ah. And, he, and my stupid friend Colin goes, oh, it's broke. <laughs> and it just, and I tried to jump off and ate it so hard on my back. So I'll did, never did he know it was broke? He put me on this thing that malfunctions <laughs> and didn't tell me. Why don't you just step off? You can't step off those things when it's going like 15 miles an hour. I like tried to jump and your feet like stick to it and you're like, when I landed on my back. It looks fun, like in a park on I, grass. Like St. Augustine beaches. Imagine that. Like, ooh, just cruising <laughs> up the beach with some headphones on. <laughs> so this dude sent me a foil. Yeah. I open it up. <laughs> And I'm super stoked. I was gonna like try it immediately. Yeah. So I like put the foil together and I'm like, <laughs> what does this go to? Right. I'm like, I've, I know nothing about foils, obviously. Right. And I, I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like looking at my boards. I'm like, do they go on boards? Like, so he didn't send a board. He forgot to send the board. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a foil. Should we, can we go get it? I'll go get it. <laughs> All right, so this is it. Someone sent us a foil. Look at it. <laughs> Whoa, what are you saying? Unifoil? So that's the part that goes down in the water. This is so sharp. I started shaving with it. <laughs> <laughs> Look how big it is. Unifoil. <laughs> 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 Whoa, what's that part? The whale tail? Unifoil, progression 140. Dude, I can't wait. Whoa. Unifoil. I know. We're just waiting for the board. How, what is the other pieces? That's to beat off surfers. <laughs> <laughs> do, do the fans want to see you unifoil? Do the fans? <laughs> do the fans. Fans, do you want to watch? Why are you trying to do paper? Sterling's going to, we're going to get Sterling on a foil board soon. So I think we need to film my first try. For sure. Just for me to eat some humble pie. Right. We're going to film the entire thing. We got to find a dock. We can go down the bayou. You just, oh yeah, there's a dock right there. There's a floating dock. <laughs> Dude, perfect. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm actually looking forward to it because when the surf's flat, I'm so bored. Dude, you're going to be foiling every day. And I would love to be on the bayou just cruising. Dude. What if I like change my whole identity? I start wearing like really neoprene tight clothes. You, get a, you have a goatee. And I always have my hands in my hips like... <laughs> And I start talking really nerdy and I become, I have no humor anymore. Yeah. AirPods. And I was like, hmm. And all I do is sit in the parking lot putting stuff together. Like, That's the one reason I would never want to do this. You have to work for it. You have to put on, <laughs> you have to have an Allen wrench. Hey there, thrill seekers and wave chasers. This segment is brought to you by our awesome sponsor, Esteem, the ultimate destination for radical surfwear. So follow them on Instagram at Esteem Surf Co. and get some radical surfwear at esteemsurf.com. Well, Laird's a hunter now. He's like, how can we monetize this elk? <laughs> elk. How can we monetize this? How can we look Send this, this picture to Gabby. <laughs> She'll monetize it, no problem. <laughs> Turns it into creamer somehow. Here we go, here this we go. This is the magician. This is him. <laughs> Wow. Was that a double kick? Was it a double? There's no way that's a it's double. It's a double. Kick. It's one. It's one. That's definitely one. So why isn't this guy more famous? I don't know. He did a kickflip. So me and Italo started this new like best friends program. It's like lovemaking in midair. Whoa. He got a little sniff. So you have to wear sandals. You have to wear sandals <laughs> and he has to trust me. It's a dog! The red and the black! <laughs> 
I can never imagine you in at a like a college getting so stoked about a football team. I went to one football game my whole life. Really? At what college? Gainesville. Gain oh, Florida? Yeah. Dude, Florida, how does it work? <laughs> Chump. <laughs> I just think it's so crazy that a kid goes to a college and then their whole identity becomes that college. Yeah, they love the the uh, football team the they, rest of their life. The rest of their life, they're like, oh, I'm at Florida State, you know, Shimon knows. It's like, you were there for like a court of a a week. You know what's funny is you'd have to trust her so much not to tickle you. <laughs> <laughs> the trust this guy has for his... <laughs> Another one! It's funny because... right. I first saw this video, I was like, oh, there's only one of these guys. No one else is doing <laughs> this. And then all of a sudden, this dude's like, bing! <laughs> <laughs> Look at this... <laughs> Whoa, birds are so Look sick. Perfect landing. That's a master. Yeah. He's a master surfer. Oh, yeah. I know this is set up, but that board totally could have just nailed him. That's what I was thinking. Like, did they think that through? That board could have. Sh what if it, like, hit him and pulled him under the car? <laughs> what is that? All just together? a bunch of bungee cords. That looks pretty fun, actually. No, it doesn't. <laughs> looks hard this is probably the most ghetto surf contraption that's been put together i couldn't cut that wood see all that wood mm, yeah you're right <laughs> it's pretty good okay. dude have you seen italo's new training program he's got something else yeah check it out whoa whoa look how strong he is <laughs> jeez <laughs> what's gonna stop him? what the Jeez, where'd they find that chair? That's a nice chair. Such a big chair. <laughs> He's reading. <laughs> this is all Italo reads. I love this angle. Look at Italo in his house. Did you see the, the newest plus size surf tour winner? No. Look at him. <gasps> is this the new world champ? Yeah. Is this Felipe? This is Belly Slater. <laughs> <laughs> is this Belly Slater? <laughs> wow. No wonder he's the champ. Look. Jeez. <laughs> Look at his friend all yeah, hyped for I him. know. He's got a hype man. I was wondering what Alana Blanchard's been up to. <laughs> She's trying to go for the world record. She's going, oh, the, she got it. She did. Dude, people said Al like Alana Blanchard. It's kind of done. Once she got older, she'd be over with, but like. She totally changed her identity. I can show you my <laughs> hair. Dude, look at this guy. It's called the human cannibal. Dude, they went for the world record Iron Lotus. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? You put as many guys on a board and see and at least one will land it. Right, it's a numbers game. <laughs> oh, here yeah. we go. The most sent video ever. <laughs> My God, literally everyone and their mom sent them me this. I know, dude. Look at uh, that. <laughs> I'm ready. So, dude, this is how Laird wakes up in the morning. Oh, he sleeps on that guy. <laughs> this is how Laird sleeps at night. <laughs> so, Laird doesn't sleep in beds. Yeah. He sleeps with men. On men. He sleeps on men and they... So, they're getting out all the demons. <laughs> So all, he's like, hey, it's good, good morning, you, baby. <laughs> that was a good sleep. So, so he goes to bed outside by his pool. All night. He's de He's got a man decompressing him. So he's, so he's in deep REM sleep right now. Oh. And look at the taint. Whoa. Straight up. So this is his wake up call right here when he starts rattling him. Wake up, Laird. Right there, he's like, Lord, take my soul. I mean, Laird's pretty big, right? I, that guy looks big. I think this guy's larger than Laird. Yeah, but that's a big carcass he's holding up. I know. <laughs> like, look at that lard. <laughs> the Laird lard. Laird lard. I'm not going to lie. This looks like it would be kind of nice. Yeah, it looks so good. Like, you know when you pick up like, your kid and you're like, God, I wish some big man could pick <laughs> me up. I know. Laird so, gets it all. Go back to that first. <laughs> the first his month. head is sticking between his thighs. <laughs> 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 okay, let me just say something real quick. When Laird's making a video like this, do you think anywhere in his mind he's like, is Sterling gonna <laughs> <laughs> Is Sterling gonna make a video about this? I think at this point they're like, Sterling's for sure <laughs> I'm gonna make fun of this. Here we go. Did you see that new interview with Kalani? Mm -mm. I hired him to be my like carry my boards and stuff. Yeah. They just interviewed him on CNN. Okay, let me check it out. 
I'm Mr. Sterling's right hand arm, man. Right hand arm, man. I'm Mr. Sterling everything. I'm his confidant, his best friend, his silly rabbit. It. His what? His silly rabbit. His silly rabbit? Yes. Is that what he calls you? No. <laughs> you, call, you call Kalani as your silly little rabbit? <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, Kalani, he'll do anything for me. <laughs> anything? Gross. Is that real? That's somebody's mom. <laughs> <laughs> is this Ivy Miller? This is how Ivy makes money. Oh. She it's... does OnlyFans events. It's called Only Farts. Only Farts? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Kim Car. Kim Kardash. Is that really her? There should be more Dong. You're right. That's not actually her. No, I think it, it is, is her. her. Oh my god. What? But look, she can't just have fun. She has to sell a product. Dude, LA people. Ugh. They're always monetizing. Dude, look at this plus size. Dude, he shreds. He's such a shred. Dude, look at the belly turns. Does that help? <laughs> Clearly. True. I feel like us plus size servers, like, it's hard for us to get up, but once we're up, There's we know how to use you it. You're downhill. <laughs> Jeez. That board is barely holding on. <laughs> <laughs> Why are people so against plus size surfing? Because How do we break the mold? Well, when you do look at someone fat, you're looking at unused calories. Right. So, <laughs> so it's like you just wasted that food just for it to sit there. Right. It's just unused calories. Right. <laughs> oh my God. Is that Taylor Knox? <laughs> <laughs> the full taint. He got tainted. But look. Here's what's weird. He got barreled by a wave and a human. <laughs> <laughs> the nastiest wipeout I've ever seen. Have you seen this? New it's um Lego came out with a surfboard. What? Yeah, it's called the Lego board. No. Yeah. Comes in pieces? Yep. And it doesn't work, but it's sick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of back this technology. It'd be nice if we could undo our boards. Let's listen to some AI wisdom. I definitely like style. They're just, to me, style's smooth, fast, easy to watch on your eyes. Doesn't give you a headache watching them. So um, I like style definitely. It can be one of the best surfers in the world. If you don't have style, I don't really, I don't, I don't like to watch them. To me, it's someone that's um, smooth, makes the hard situation look easy and can pull it off with grace. His face is strong, so agile. His face is built for surfing. Look at it. It's like a, like a warrior's uh, helmet. You so never, what's up? What happened to style? I think it got too extreme. Everyone just wants to pop a big boosty. It's like everything's so radical now. Is that true in surfing world where it's like, okay, whoa, he did a huge backside 360 inverted snap. <laughs> or and it's not just all about the Tom Curran. Yeah, we've lost our roots. I think I explained it pretty good. <laughs> Becoming a fat man is the dream of every child in the Bodhi tribe of Ethiopia. What? This guy's a legend. We're in the wrong country. We would be worshipped there. And he's like the man. He's got puka headsets. <gasps> <It's a> puka. <laughs> We're in the wrong culture, dude. I mean, they got the puka headset. Everyone makes fun of us, but there we would be worshipped with puka headsets. We'd be heroes for life. <gasps> I love how serious this Whoa. guy is. Is this a surf bench? Look at it. It's shaky. <laughs> That's Whoa. how you train They it. must be getting so good. Oh, what do they got? Ain ankle guards. He's got knee guards on his ankle. Whoa, she's brave. Look how brave <gasps> she is. <laughs> Uh, really up there. Uh, um, can we not do this right here, please? Uh, yeah. What is he doing? This man is confused. <laughs> Whoa. So he's belly boarding. Yeah. Back to his roots. This is how he used to serve. But look at his board. He summons it. He's like, come on back, boy. He got back on it. That's crazy. And straight back into shredding. Is that Eminem? <laughs> he's stuck. <laughs> Is that Marshall Math? He's pumped. Look, and he can't believe it. Like, Serving second chances. Here we go. Jeez. Pretty sick. Sick. This is plunger surfing. This is Aki's new wave pool. No way, mm -hmm. dude. That looks like a good it's insane. one. Insane. The only thing they need to do is cover up the plunger. Yeah, the plunger looks weird. Put like some trees around it or something. <laughs> that would be sick. 
This looks like really cool. Is this really Aki's? Mm -hmm. What do they call it? I think it's something plunger or <laughs> the Aki plunge. Okay, this looks like the most chaotic, ooh, horrible place to be in life. This is Malibu. Ugh, is this really Malibu? Mm -hmm. Look how terrible it Why is. Why is there no surf etiquette? This, this is, is what happens when there's no locals um, cracking, giving orders. It's just, there's no rules. There's no order. There needs to be rules. You know the rules. Come on, guys. This is what happens when uncles don't give the rules out. Gosh, it looks so annoying. No one got the memo. You don't cut each other off. Let's do it together. None of them have any clue. Look. I don't think any of these people grew up surfing or like had someone to tell them, them to don't cut people off this looks like the worst place in the world to and surf. you see everyone paddling out in the line yes you're supposed to paddle around gosh this yo. is the woke generation this is woke surfing this is woke surfing because no one can get offended no one can you can't yell at anyone you right. can't so this is what happens guys if woke culture gets into surfing yeah california is super woke and now it's just become a free-for-all <laughs> Question. Sir. Is this the actual picture of the dog? No, right? that's actually a famous meme dog that they put in all sorts of things. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever had a fart situation on an airplane? Oh, my dog, God, dude. Oh, my dog, God. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Oh, my dog, God. I was a 16-year-old headed in Australia for the first time. And I'm with five older gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I ate some terrible airplane food mm. so i was letting these squirts these out farts out and dude <laughs> they were so terrible <laughs> and these so it went on for like an hour and then finally one of the guys is like he's a hawaiian he's like bro if i smell that fart one more time he's like who is it who is it he was like trying to find who it is. He's like looking people now. He's like, is it you? <laughs> and it was me, and I was like helping him. I'm like, it might be her over there. <laughs> she looks like she's so. Turned. Another hour goes by, and they're getting more intense. Like every three minutes, it was every ten minutes, and then it got the, it was, in, <laughs> the intervals. So shortened. then all my friends were all in this one round. They're all just like, ah, oh, not again. He's standing up. He's like, who is it? <laughs> Who's doing it? And you're just like. Mm -hmm. And I'm like so scared. I can't tell them now. I'm like, dude, we've come this far. <laughs> you should have told them. So then we're on three hours. Yeah. And I remember they were getting tired of getting mad. They couldn't keep up the energy. And I remember one of my friends, he was from North Carolina. He was sponsored by KFC. What? He, I remember I let one out and he's, he's trying to sleep and I see his nose flare. And then I, I see a tear. He's like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> he got it. like jet lagged. Like, no more, please. Ugh. And you never told him. Never told him. Do you make your bed every morning? Dude, you know how they say, like, if you make your bed, it's like the best thing you, first yeah. thing in the morning, make your bed. It's all about task completion. Task completion. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. Yeah, like you start out, right, the military gets you going. And I was reading this research. They're saying making the bed is one of the worst things for your health. Really? Explain. Sounds like bull crap. When you put a blanket over sheets real tight, it creates like a allergy microbiomes that like are terrible for your health. Like a cave of microbiomes? <laughs> <laughs> like a cave of microbiomes. Like where all your farts and dead skin are just... That, I guess allergens grow. Hmm. And you're supposed to like leave your bed open. And what's funny is like, I feel like there's a truth to everything and mm. then there's the opposite truth. Yeah, That's, make your bed, don't make your bed. <laughs> well, it's like make your bed and it'll change your life. <laughs> and then these people are like, well, if you make your bed, actually you're gonna die sooner. Gosh. So it's like, I feel like for everything, right. it's like that. There's a yin yang to everything. Don't drink coffee, drink coffee. Don't lose weight, let's <laughs> well, that one might be good. <laughs> be fat, don't be fat. <laughs> I was just we're to... just trying to make ourselves feel better about <laughs> her laziness <laughs> exactly but I, I feel like 
everyone's always fighting about everything. Yeah. And I think everyone's kind of maybe right. In their own way. Have you ever seen the picture of the six? One guy's looking at the six and he's like, and then the other guy's looking at it, it's a nine. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're fighting about it. Yeah. And they're both right. I, dude, you're, that's good stuff. <laughs> you're right. Everybody's got an opinion, but maybe everyone's kind of right in some way. Yeah. Like Boy. one guy's like, if you make your bed, it'll change your life. And he's probably right. Right. But then he's going to die sooner than the guy that never made his bed. From allergies. From allergies. <laughs> <laughs> his life, what do you call it? His His, his wallet? His quality. <laughs> His quality of life will be bad, but his bed will be made. Hey, hop. <laughs> Could you have ever been in the military? Imagine yeah. imagine you and me got stuck in boot camp. I'm actually super good at uh, that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> military stuff? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you sound so stupid. I'm actually, I'm actually <laughs> super good at that stuff. If a military guy's watching right now, he's like, what is he talking about? <laughs> oh, shoot. That was fun. I'm really good at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Like shooting? Okay. Well, I know it doesn't look like, but I'm actually a super structured person when like, it comes to working out, health. Right. Once you're on it. Like I'm always on it. Oh, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm talking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm always moving and surfing. Like, right. Not counting the years of my brain injury. Well, when I pulled up, you were jumping up and down on the trampoline. I'm always like upgrading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> upgrading? But I think I would crush boot camp. That's a good way to put it. Upgrading. <laughs> <laughs> All day, every day, I'm upgrading. In the early O's, yeah. Billabong had these pro surf camps. Uh -huh. And they're super hard. And I would crush. Like drill sergeants? Like Yeah, we would have to... So we'd, we'd be on the North Shore uh -huh. and like freaking, they'd come in at five in the morning like, come on, rah! Really? And we'd have to run down to Waimea Bay and pat swim the whole bay, swim all the way back, and then run the beach, run the back, swim again, swim back, and then walk back home That's every morning. Just to get you going and like training. We were just getting in shape. That's cool. I didn't know they did that. We did it for months. And like I was always top dog. Nice. Like a... Uh, I'm super into that stuff. Structure. I just love working out. I love moving. Hmm. And um, my belly's hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're going to get hate. But uh, no, I'm super into that stuff. Yeah. So I think I would crush boot camp. Dude, I would have crushed Navy SEAL. <laughs> <laughs> crushed Navy SEAL. My brain injury, once that happened, everything changed. But before... I was doing Wim Hof breathing. Yeah. Do you know what that is? Yeah, you've told me do about it. Do you remember it. that? You made me do it once and I just got a little dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing that every morning. <sighs> like that? <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing Wim Hof breathing every morning. Okay. And my goal was to surf all winter without a wetsuit. Whoa. And it gets cold here. It does get cold. 20 here. degrees. Yeah. Water gets down to lower 50s. Yeah. Dude, so why why would why would why would why would you want to do no wetsuit? I surfed all winter without a wetsuit. What does that do? You become strong, like as mind frick. over matter. Yeah, and if you you get this stuff called brown fat. Ooh, have you heard of brown fat? No. You know, like white fat chicken. <laughs> oh, like you talking about chicken? <laughs> <laughs> Are people listening? <laughs> We just get hungry and start talking. Mm. White, <laughs> white meat? chicken or brown meat? <laughs> okay, start over. You were <laughs> brown fat. So if you put your body in a cold constantly, you get this thing called brown fat. Okay. And it's this thicker fat oh. where it keeps you warm. I would like ride a bike for 10 miles or go run in the dunes by myself. And it's in the middle of winter. It's like 20 degrees out. I'm in shorts. I'm just running around. Brown fat. Like with my brown fat. <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> it's kind of, it kind of changed me, if not for the best. What'd it do? Aggro? I was starting to feel like angry. Really? And I was never kind of, like I'm always super mellow. And then like I started like feeling like, what? Maybe your testosterone was like. <laughs> I think 
you just have to find balance with mm-hmm. anything. And yeah. if you're constantly like so intense, yeah, I, it was taking a toll on my brain. Mm. So like I was so intense of staying warm. So in my normal, when I get to normal life, I'd be at like a Christmas party. I'm like, what? It's like dudes that do CrossFit all day. Yeah, I was becoming one of them. <laughs> oh, don't do that. I know, I was losing my mellow. Can we talk about CrossFitters? Yeah. Well, why are they all so amped? Because their juices are flowing. Like I heard there's this weird imbalance in life in America where you're either overweight and crappy or you're a freaking Spartan. <laughs> <laughs> like Americans don't know how to balance. Yeah, that's true. We're fat or we can run a million miles and kill everybody in our path. But you know what I'm saying? I feel like no one does balance in life, including yes. me. And that's what I learned hmm. with the brain injury. Life's I think my brain injury happened from exactly what you're saying, uh, going too hardcore. Too hardcore. My wife hates it because I'm so all or nothing. So like I'm nothing and I'm eating brie <laughs> or I'm like. <laughs> yeah, and I got to find that balance. I remember when I was in my 20s and you guys made fun of me. And I said, when I'm at, when I turn 30, <laughs> I want to be a morning person. And I was like 24, so I had like six years to get to Is that. that. You said? <laughs> like no, you said <laughs> you wanted to lose 10 pounds <laughs> in 10 years. <laughs> and Jake, our friend Jake, he's so mean. Jake loves to make fun of Ryan. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I want to lose. By the time <laughs> I'm 30, I want to lose 10 pounds. <laughs> and Jake just go. And I was like 24 at the time, so I had 10 years to lose 10 or whatever, six years. You're like 20, and Jake is like, so you have a 10-year goal to lose 10 pounds? (laughs) Oh, and it didn't happen. It's pretty funny. It is pretty funny. (laughs) A pound a year. Dude, I was at a soccer game the other day, and I was talking to um, Chase Griffin. Oh, yeah? And he was like talking about, pickleball we're talking about pickleball how fun it is and stuff and i was like he's like remember spike ball and i was like he's like sterling was so good at spike ball (laughs) and i was like dude the only time me and sterling got in fights are over spike ball (laughs) (laughs) because sterling does little things that are kind of totally legal but semi-cheaty and you'd be like it's not cheating they're tricky you would do things like kind of cheaty but not it was legal and i'd do like maybe get in my way a little bit (laughs) (laughs) or like It's the dumbest game ever because you can do this thing called a pocket where it messes up and you would do like, and I'd be like, it's a pocket. You're like, "Uh -uh." and I'd be like, it's a pocket. No, no, no. no. (laughs) See? (laughs) It was the opposite. Oh, I remember playing spike ball on our knees in some living room. (laughs) I got so mad about something. I get competitive. I was maybe the best spike baller. You were definitely the best one in town. (laughs) (laughs) What? Frustrated, yeah. You and others, yeah. <laughs> As I would, I would go to the middle, like I'm gonna hit it this way, and doink. and then I would hit it with my left hand, yeah. and like I go <laughs> by my knees, and you're like, ah, you can't do that. I remember I started getting mad, and you were getting mad too. And Dave, we were at Dave's house, and Dave was like, "Settle down, guys. This is a game." And I was like, oh. "It's like the only time you've ever gotten mad." At you. I think because I was like, "He's cheating." To recap. <laughs> Life's about balance. America is imbalanced. We're not balanced. We're crossfitting or we're crossfatting. Crossfat. What's a fitness fad that you saw coming and you're like, I ain't doing that. Well, dude, I went on a trip with Shane Doran. He's yeah. kind of like that. Like, you got to try these bands. Dude, he went He went through a vegan phase that no one ever knew about. Really? It was like a secret vegan phase? Yeah, it was for one week. Oh. <laughs> one no, it was week? like for one month. Okay, one month. I was with him for a week. So, dude, I went to El Salvador with Shane Dorn. Mm-hmm. Is it Dorian or Dor- Dorian? Oh, because you're saying Dorn. <laughs> well, we're just close like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Shane Dorn. Shane Dorn. So, Shane was going through a vegan phase. He read this book called The China Theory. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, dude, meat's terrible. You should never. Uh, and it was like rocking my world. He was in super good shape. Right. But he was only doing it for like two weeks. So I'm like seeing him, he's like ripped, he's working out all the time. He he was only eating beans and stuff. Uh-huh. And he was just trying it. Right. Cause he got tricked by the, the, <laughs> the book. The book. So like I hug him goodbye. I'm like, all right, I love you. And like, <laughs> whoa. so I went, <laughs> I went home and I was like, I'm gonna become a vegan. Nice. If Shane's doing it. Yeah, <laughs> he's quit already. So I got into, <laughs> so I got into it. I became a vegan for like over a year. 
And so I see him in California. <laughs> He's eating <a laughs> in and out. And uh, we were at this reef event. And we had to drive somewhere. I was like, Shane, get in my, I was like, get in my car. And he was like, kind of nervous. Like, uh, he thought I was going to like trick him or something. Get in my car. So he gets in and I'm like, dude, I'm a vegan now. Like, you inspired just, me. just like you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, I, I stopped that. Like the Damn. day after that trip, I lost all my muscle almost. And it was terrible. Like ruined my health. And I'm like, I'm like so skinny. And I'm like, what? Like it rocked my world, dude. Like. Uh. I was like, but I became a vegan for you. <laughs> He's eating a steak? No, 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 no. Oh, he became like a carnivore. He was only eating meat. <laughs> <laughs> and he was super ripped. He, his muscles were like hitting yeah. his chin. Like, like a kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so like skinny and tired. I'm like, what? I did this for you. <laughs> I was like losing my mind. You tried to get me to be a vegan a couple times and I would be ordering chicken wings. <laughs> with me not looking in the drive through turn put you on mute like yeah so this is what happens that tricks people into veganism let's hear it the first month you feel insane like mental clarity well you're detoxing oh so if you're growing vegan you're normally pretty healthy okay. you're not eating like doritos or whatever so not eating processed foods you just naturally go through this insane detox and mm. you feel incredible. So then once you feel that incredibleness, you're, you're hooked. Right. But you don't realize <clears throat> in a couple months it starts doing reverse effects, mm. but you're so brainwashed that this is it. Right. You're just riding that you're, first feeling you yeah, got. You're chasing that. And first. then it, after a couple of years, you start getting these new weird problems that I never had. Like what? Like, uh, bad fingernails. Like, uh, well, like mental health issues. Oh, oh, oh. so I am worried now that there's going to be a lot of vegan comments. I think everyone's different. Right. That's true. I think it's more about your blood type. Okay. And some people's blood types are do really good on plants okay so i'm i'm a negative o or o negative <laughs> blood type <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> my blood type is o negative gotcha and it's i do best with meat from what i read i don't know what blood type i am my blood type's actually pretty special is it the universal donor mm -hmm. dude and there's so only like three of us Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Kelly, and Laird. Dude. So now I know if I'm bleeding out. Call Sterling. I'm probably like plus negative. Plus size? Negative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm plus size blood. So vegans out there, it, it could work for you. It's like a chiropractor. So you know how there's bears? Yeah. Polar bears? Gay bears? There's gay bears? Well, men that are gay are called bears. <laughs> <laughs> So polar bears, they can only eat meat. Okay. A panda bear, it can only eat plants. Hmm. It's, I think we're the same way. Oh. So if you put a panda bear on an all-meat diet, it will no have doubt. terrible effects. What would that do? Would it just kill it? <laughs> they get great. Like, oh, oh, that's that's pretty pretty good. Good. <laughs> we should have been eating. <laughs> Why are we eating these plants? Why are we eating bamboo all day? splinters in my stomach. <laughs> Splinter in my tongue. <laughs> So I'm not hating on veganism. I'm, I'm hating on that when people think there's one diet for everyone. Right. So chill out, vegs. I feel like the theme of this podcast is balance. Whoa. Yeah, we're getting there. We find balance. You'd have, to be a good vegan, I think you'd have to live in another country with volcanic soils. Well, I've heard some people, <laughs> they just eat... <laughs> <laughs> Like I have a I have a a friend that's vegan on the weekends. Vegan on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> vegan on the weekend. Or maybe it's the other way. He's vegan all week and whatever. <laughs> Me on the side. So I'm like, that sounds good. Like be a vegan a few days a week. It's kind of like being a Christian a few days a week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm Christian on the weekends. I'm Christian on the weekdays. <laughs> I mean. Balance. Balance. So that probably is good. That's good. Do you know what I think 
when do you think your peak happiness age is? What? Like in life as a human, when do you peak out on happiness? Like no care in the world, life's good. It could be different for everybody, but I have my th- own theory. So we're picking an age? Yeah. If you had to say your age of peak happiness is? I think mine might be like 45. Oh, you haven't hit it. Mm-mm. So mine's a little more pessimistic. Mine's behind me. Nine years old, I think, is peak happiness age. You know why I was looking at my nine year old I was looking at my nine year old daughter. She's old enough to like get life somewhat, right. but not old enough to be like, Santa's not real. Like everything right. is peak happiness. Yeah, that's sick. <laughs> <laughs> like I have memories of just running around in my house at nine, not a <laughs> like the bills are probably insane the hurricane's coming my dad's probably like <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> just life is no so good in the world i think nine years old is the peak happiness age because i look at my 11 year old son now and he's kind of like thinking about stuff like mm, i gotta do that right <laughs> <laughs> the burdens of life are starting to yeah <laughs> <laughs> nine years old well <coughs> I think it takes work. I think 45 for me. Hopefully I'll be enlightened by then. Takes a couple more years. So I want to lose 10 more pounds by 45. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to be enlightened. So I'm thinking around 45, <laughs> you become enlightened. <laughs> okay. And you're over the insecurities. You're over trying to please anyone. You're, right. I think you're over a lot of stuff that you felt like in your 20s. You know, you got to yeah. prove something. And 45, I think you're still healthy enough to be as active as you want to be. Right. If you find your right diet and stuff like that. And so I think 45, like you're what you're wiser right like your past like making stupid decisions kind of <clears throat> you kind of understand i think to be happy older you have to really figure it out yeah to then enjoy everything if well, you don't figure it out it won't get better if there's any 45 year olds out there let us know if you're <laughs> they're, like, eh. they're at peak happiness well, I think you have to figure out your relationships with people. You have to figure out family structure. Like for you to, when you're younger, you can just kind of screw everything. Right. You can just be, you can be screwing everyone over and you're like. Selfish. Yeah. Like when you're older and you have kids, like everything has to be structured. And I'm learning mm. for your own peace. Right. Like I need my son set up. I need, you know, my family, like we need to be this close for everyone feels grounded. Hmm. There's so much to being happy when you start getting older. But I think once you figure it out, you're old enough to relish the moment. Right. You can slow it down. You can feel, you can like really feel things and like, okay, this isn't forever. I really want to enjoy like my time being alive. Right. And the good times come and go. When you're nine, you don't even remember them. Really. I know. So I that's wanna, the difference. That's where I want to be at, though. <coughs> well, I think that's what the la- afterlife is like. Just a nine-year-old? Yeah, you're just living. So when we all die, we'll be nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think happened to all the CDs in the world? Where'd they go? Where'd they go? <laughs> I had cases and cases and cases of them. You go to Best Buy, the aisles are like... Isn't it weird? Like, <laughs> CDs was everything. CDs was everything. And then now it's like, if you have them, it's like. People are like, get out of here with that CD. <laughs> Dude, but my favorite thing was if you had a girl you liked and you'd make her a CD. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's a big deal. It was like you were giving them part of your heart. <laughs> I mean, it's just some crappy You're songs. Like, Jumbo Wumba. <laughs> <laughs> Jumbo Wumba. Spice Girls. One of the Spice Girls songs. Yeah, I just, I just always wonder where all the trash is in the ground somewhere somewhere people are so worried about like plastic and trash and stuff yeah but what if it's like like you know <laughs> <coughs> you know that they say oils from dinosaurs yeah is that real i don't know i don't know anything about it's that like stuff. what if the plastic is some like when it decomposes yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to follow. When plastic decomposes, oh, it's, like, it's, it's a, like a future fuel that will oh. change the world. 
Oh, so like in a thousand years from now, they'll be like, we found some old CDs. <laughs> we can, <laughs> they can use it for fuel. Like CDs is the new oil <laughs> for a spacecraft. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> our great, 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 great grandkids. <laughs> okay. If, if there's ever been a podcast where people think we're high, <laughs> this is the one. Golly. Like CDs. <laughs> You know, cavemen back in the day, they see dinosaurs and like, idiots. Like, these dinosaurs are getting in the way. <laughs> and now we're like, thank God for the dinosaurs. We wouldn't have oil for our cars. Is that really what it's all from? Fossil, f- fossil fuel. Fossil That's fuel. what it's called. <laughs> fossil fuel. <laughs> Please, in the comments, let us know <laughs> if what we're saying is right. So what if CDs <laughs> is like... F- s- Fossil fuel for the future. <laughs> it might be. An old friggin' Celine Dion CD might power spaceships. And all the vegans are like yelling at people for mm. littering. But literally that will be what the future needed. Might be. Do you think there was a vegan back in the caveman days that everyone made fun of? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no meat for me. They're like, they're Devin, you got to eat this. Devin. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like. <laughs> he's like. And he's so frail. <laughs> The first. They're like, hey, can you pull this wheel? <laughs> I was with this Native American tribe. You were part of a na- Native American? I went and hung out with one. Where at? <sighs> at Fort Pickens. <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> they, there's a tribe that meets. Oh, they like have. So I like went and hung out with them. And I was a vegan at the time. Okay. And I told them they were vegan. They're like, <laughs> They started dying laughing. The Native Americans. Yeah, and they still they could speak like native tongues still. So they're talking bad about you. They're like, what? they're like, ooh, doo, doo, so they're like, oh, we have a word for you. I'm what? Like, what? They're like, bad hunter. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, ah. <laughs> I'm a vegan. I'm just a bad hunter. And they're, and I, and I thought they would have been stoked. You're like, bro, I'm a vegan. Like I I care about the plants. <laughs> and they were like. They're so dialed into nature. Right. They're like, if you understood nature, like plants are a higher conscious than animals. Whoa. And I was like, what? And they're like, <laughs> yeah, like they're like plants are way beyond like animals. Hmm. So <clears throat> they kind of told me stories like when they teach a child to hunt, if the after their first kill, if they don't cry, they won't let them hunt for five more years or something. And so if a, if a child doesn't have empathy, mm. he's not ready to hunt That's because really cool. he'll just kill things for the fun of it. Wow. So if their first kill, they cry, then they're ready because wow. they care and they understand that you know, this is the circle of life and we eat them, which gives us yeah. and our soul growth. Mm. And it's a circle and we're gonna die one day and the earth will, you know, eat our body right. and nourish it. And it's this circle. And if they can't get that, so I'm like a vegan. <laughs> you got your keto snacks? And he like blew my mind so hard. I had like an Amazon <laughs> vegan account. <laughs> In your cart? You're deleting your cart? And I was like, whoa that's gnarly and so i was out at fort pickens and freaking i'm looking around i'm like if i didn't have amazon what could i eat out here right if you were a modern it's vegan. just there's nothing right i would have to eat fish i would have to hunt bad hunter. squirrel <laughs> dude fort pickens if people don't know it's like a sick old base in the civil war that lives right around the corner geronimo was caught there geronimo was caught there what are you going to be for Halloween this year? Oh my gosh. Oh. What's up, YY? Mm. Oh, sorry. What's one pumpkin plus one pumpkin? Uh. A good time? No. Two pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This wow. guy gets it. You're like blowing our minds right now. Can I tell you a joke? What? What did the pirate say when he turned 80? I don't know. I'm 80. <laughs> <laughs> You can have that one. Why can you never give a balloon to Elsa? Because she'll let it go. (laughs) Oh, I get that one. Wyatt, what do you think about the economic state in our country right now? Exactly. And we'll be right back. 
So when we used to go to weddings, you used to do something that was insane. Dude, what was up with that? Sterling went on his hot streak. You know in a wedding where they take the garter thing off? And what the, are those? I don't know what they are. But it's like from a pantyhose? It's like this thing called a garter, and they stick it on their thigh, and the husband, is the groom. Is that with his teeth? He, their teeth, or what? depends on what if they're Christian or not. They use their hands <laughs> or something. And then they, the groom flicks it back, and Sterling, tell the story. Oh, the groom throws it? The groom shoots it back or throws it back or whatever. So there was like <laughs> the age when everyone's starting to get married. Yeah, in our early 20s. We had seven weddings that summer. Yeah. Dude, I caught all of them. <laughs> we have photos. I went on a rampage. <laughs> Sterling would catch every garter. <laughs> <laughs> and the groom would pick them up. And he's like, ah. So I had a system set in place. Oh, what is it? So I would stand to the side. Okay. And get a running start. <laughs> <laughs> so when she would go to throw it, I would jump <laughs> from the side and be like, ah, and get it every time. You got it every time. Every time. It, and I was so athletic then, I could jump so high. <laughs> so the, all the guys would be waiting, and then I would, I would see the girl, you know, she'd be like talking to the crowd like, should I throw it? <laughs> I think it's the guy. Okay, the guy. <laughs> <laughs> the girl throws the <laughs> I, took, I got that one too. Yeah, you would throw, oh yeah, you would do the flowers. So the guy would go to like flip the pantyhose. <laughs> yeah. And I would just, I'd be 10 seconds of running. Like, and <laughs> And I would get it every time. It was. I remember one time being like, he's not going to get it this time. And he got it. And I was like, what the <laughs> frick, dude? Seven weddings yeah. in a row. And I tried to get it too. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> he would jump over me and get it. It was insane. It was a good streak. And then it was like everyone <laughs> was waiting to see if I could get it. Like people had things set in place yeah. to try to block me. We teamed up on you. <laughs> and I would still sink. It was so funny. I remember that one last time or whenever it was, I was like, he's not getting it this time and you got it. Why do they do that? What's up with traditions? What's <laughs> up with that? People do the weirdest stuff just because it's always been done. Dude, not to sound like a freaking hater. Weddings are like some of the worst things a human could do. I 100% agree. <laughs> I hate wedding. The modern wedding is the most it's bull disgusting. crap piece of junk it's a big money pit i used to film weddings and then i'd be like while i'm filming i'm like these people are getting divorced <laughs> <laughs> and dude 50 percent of all the weddings i shot they're all divorced there needs to be a two-year grace period to see if it works hmm. so the first two years you get married there's a two year you can get out without any issues any or met money issues no money like it's not doesn't click into place into two years what's that word that rich people have for what for when they divorce so they don't have to give away their money uh, a prenup a prenup <laughs> <laughs> there should be a and you're saying a legit prenup two year pre two year grace period prenup and then when you hit the two it takes effect oh so like you had a week left and you're like oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> <I stand. laughs> dude but no the modern wedding it's just an excuse for the bride to spend all of her parents money it's disgusting it's disgusting it's like you need to buy a ring that's a quarter of your salary. Ugh. It's like, what? Why, dude? And then the dresses and the flowers and the ugh. these the girls go into this like crazy state. Totally, where they they don't even love you anymore. Nope, not for that period. <laughs> the biggest fight we ever got in me and my wife was about the wedding. The whole thing is about pictures. Yeah. You don't even enjoy the moment. No, it's about what the pictures look like. It's like you get married and then you stand around for pictures for two hours while everyone's eating and drinking. Yeah, no, and you're like... And you don't even enjoy your wedding. And you're doing poses that are so unnatural. <laughs> back it's, to back. It's the stupidest thing. I think you're right. Weddings need to chill. It's, it's a money scam. It's a <laughs> scam, it is. And then once you get... If you get divorced, then it's another money scam. <sighs> And then getting married, it's so easy. To get married? You can get married in a second. <laughs> yeah. Does it, it's just like, boom, so quick, and then to get divorced. Could like, we legally get married? Is it the cousin thing stopping it? <laughs> <laughs> can cousins marry? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe in Florida. Can do it? I'm going to Google it. Two male... Mailmen. <laughs> <laughs> can mailmen get married? Can cousins get married? While you're doing that, I think that mailmen are not going to be around much longer. Why females are going to take over? No, like they'll just have Amazon bots. <laughs> <laughs> and 
In some states, including New York, California, and Florida, you can marry your first cousin with no restrictions. Sweet. But in many other states like West Virginia, Kentucky, and Texas, cousin marriage is banned altogether. You know why it's banned there? Because <laughs> it was running rampant in those <laughs> states. <laughs> They're like, inbred is... Have you ever seen those videos on YouTube of like the most inbred family in America? The, there's one... No, I'm not making fun of them. The one dude literally is a dog. A he, dog? He barks. He doesn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> He's like... Rup! Cut. Go to the clip. Dude, so have you, you know what I like to do when I go to a party? If I'm at a get together and stuff like that, I can't stand it. Social interactions and all that stuff. Mm. I do the Irish goodbye. Do you know what that is? You just sneak out. Dude, I sneak out all the time. <laughs> I love it. It's You're like one of those. Like I look around and I'm like, this is it. And I just <laughs> I did it the other day at a party. They had a side fence and where everyone's outside and I just was like <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about y'all. But they say it's actually, in some cultures, it's actually polite to do that. Really? And I don't know why, but. Dude, this is like the making the bed. Yeah. Some say it's wrong. Some say it's right. I say be a good person in Irish goodbye every party you go to. <laughs> I don't like the fake, ah, oh, goodbye. It took so long to say hi. <laughs> yeah, I just I said hi. Goodbye. Why am I saying goodbye? I'll see you later, dude. <laughs> so, dude. What? Who do you think's the goat? LeBron or Michael Jordan? Who's the GOAT? I think... Be the, honest. Okay. I think there's debate There's for both. Who's the best basketball player ever? I think it's LeBron. Really? Just all the stats, all the things he's done. I know. And he's still... What is he? He's the oldest guy in the NBA right now. No. <laughs> what do you think? I think he needs to win one more. Okay, so you still think it's up for grabs. Well, LeBron is my pick. Okay. But... I think he needs to win one more. Okay. He's got to do it. Because looking at the stats, like how could, you know, MJ has six. Right. And they're like, like the kids are going to be like, how did this guy who won four is the best? <laughs> oh, okay. You know, like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like two more. Right. And it's like, well, actually, you know, yeah. he, so I think if he wins one more, it's only one off. And then, you know, you'll look at the stats. He's the number one scorer, scorer yeah. of all time. And he's like fifth um, assist. assist. Yeah. Like people being like, oh, okay, yeah. He like was almost first in everything. Right. And then he won five, one away. Right. So. But isn't the big debate that he loses in the finals all the time? That's what I always hear about Michael Jordan. He never lost in the finals. It's like, okay. But he, <clears throat> he had Scottie Pippen. Well, it's like okay, he he didn't make it to the finals every year. That's true. So he he didn't to... even make it to the finals. I know what you're saying. So because he because he didn't make it to the final, like LeBron was so consistent of getting there. He he's been there eleven times. That's insane. And then he's only won four. The teams he got there with, yeah, like the people he dragged to the finals. <laughs> Yeah. It was like the most ragtag bunches of crews. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's true. Who did Michael Jordan beat? Like no one even remembers. Charles okay. Charles Barkley, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I know what you're saying. He didn't beat Shaq and Kobe. No. He didn't beat like there was no gnarly uh teams the pistons we talked about isaiah but the pistons beat him twice when they were in their prime right and then once they started getting older they lost hmm. i think that's when you know the goat debate you uh you start getting into the details yeah it's like lebron beat steph curry the best shooter ever ever he's a robot and it was the best team ever put together they won 73 games that's, yeah that's more than anyone ever and lebron Beat them in game seven. Came down from 3 1. First, first one to ever do it. He freaking beat the best team ever with Kyrie Irving, who's having a hissy fit every right. five minutes, and Kevin Love, who's got like a broken shoulder every yeah. third weekend. <laughs> <laughs> like he beat the gnarliest team ever with basically no one. Right. Like Kyrie Irving was awesome, but he, he was like the most like crybaby. Yeah. Like to win with someone with that bad of an attitude constantly, like LeBron, how is it, how is his whole head not gray and bald? I know, dude. He must have Rogaine. Well, they say Michael Jordan because he won six, 
But it's like three peats. Bill Russell won eleven. Right. If you're ca- if you're going off that, then Bill Russell would be the best. Bill Russell's the best. <laughs> so so it's like, okay, you have to get into the details if you're saying Michael Jordan is the best. True. Because Bill Russell would be the best. It's true. He's won eleven, and he was the coach too. That's so weird. Could you imagine? I'm putting me in, coach. <laughs> I'm putting me in, me. Because <laughs> if he wins this year, he'll be the oldest player ever to win. Dude, that would be sick. And it would be um, over 20 years of winning. Gosh. So I think if he can win one more. I don't think people understand. He has been in the top level NBA for 20 years. I think if LeBron goes for five more years... How's he going to go for five more, 45? What is he, 38? <laughs> he's 38. Dude. He could do five more. If he did five more, then he's drinking baby blood or something. He's on that baby blood. He's on the Hollywood baby blood. Did you see that video where they're like, D- LeBron, you know you're the oldest guy in the NBA now? LeBron James is the oldest player in the NBA. Your reaction. <laughs> and then it shows him just like, <laughs> like dunk it so hard. I think he needs to win one more. He'll win one more. That one four more. just doesn't look good. <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you a question, Sterling. How much money is enough money? How much money? How much money is enough money? Do you want actual numbers or do you want philosophical? Uh, I guess philosophical because you can't put in money. Because like, depending on where you live, if you live in Haiti, 50 bucks is good for the year. I think if you find happiness within yourself, you don't, it doesn't matter. Well, I saw a video recently that made me think about it. This guy's like, okay, say you're a hundred grand a year guy. That's what you make. And I make you a 300 grand a year guy. You eventually that won't be enough. And you'll be like, Oh, I... he's like, I bought a Lamborghini, put a hundred miles on it, was happy with it for like a week. And then I sold it. It's like when you get to a certain level of money, yeah. you're, you're bumming. You don't care anymore. I think for me, it would be easier to be happy with more money. There's nothing wrong with Cause money. I just want a house on the water. Ooh. In Hawaii, I want, I want to be an Italian mafia. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching The Sopranos, and I'm like, oh, I just want to beat people up and take their money. <laughs> well, like, I just want to serve. Yeah. So if I could just have money to take care of being somewhere where I want to be, well, I think we've talked about this. All people want is freedom. Yeah. Money gives you freedom. I know it's so sad. I know. My dream life would be like. I move all of us to Hawaii. And we have a compound with yeah. all of our kids and stuff. Yeah. And it's like a farm. It'd be sick if we lived by Kelly and we could shoot spitballs at him. <laughs> <laughs> he lives a pipeline. Yeah, let's get by let's so get we buy a house right at pipe. By Kelly. Guys, get us rich enough so we can <laughs> buy a house by Kelly and mess with him. Buying a house at pipelines, it seems so intense. Uh it must be insanely expensive. Well, it's like, why would you want a house at Pipeline? Why not? Is this too mega surf? Well, have you been there? No. <laughs> Dude, in the winter, it's so cramped. Oh, there's a lot of people. Uh, yeah. At, the whole world's coming yeah, right there. Like, so there's this crazy energy at Pipe. Like, uh, everyone's like, I want to see you. I want to see you. And if you're sitting there with your house, you'd be like. Mm. Yeah, but he probably has like soundproof, bulletproof walls. Well, he probably likes that energy. Oh, he likes it. I would like to be up on the mountain, like cozy, oh, quiet. Ride your e-bike down. Like I could see it down right. there. I don't want like to be in it constantly. Yeah. But yeah, money is all people want is to be free, not to have to be somewhere at 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Winner. Sub- subscribe. Um, <laughs> watch the show. Please like and comment. <sighs> That was a doozy. Oh. Oh my gosh. Get ready. For, Halloween's coming, guys. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. We love you. How's it? Thank you for watching Pinch My Salt, the hit podcast of the world's number one surfer, Sterling Spencer. You know the rules. Subscribe and tickle that like button. Pinch My Salt. Pinch My Salt.